Yeah, hi, hi, family. Uh, I've been asked to speak this morning just to share about uh, one uh, Peter chapter one verses eighteen to twenty-five, and I'm sure that you've all read them. I've read them in the message, and I've read them in the amplified. And it it really just rolls on from what we were talking about on Sunday and and, and identity. It says that. You know, we were initially born um, of, of, of human sperm, it says, in both those translations. And that that is reference to our earthly life, our old life. And when Jesus came and, and gave his life as the Messiah, as the Lamb of God, his sacrifice took our old life and we died with him fully 100 percent nothing left of the old life whatsoever so we are not referenced at all in scripture by our old human life we are referenced purely in the resurrection power of jesus that we are born again brand new creations and that what was amazing as you read that scripture also says that the Father knew, knew right from the very, very beginning, foreplanned, foretold exactly the way it was going to work out. And, and this world, as beautiful as this world is, when you look at it, it talks about the grass and the flowers. And, and, and they have a radiance and a beauty, but they are also seasonal. We're way, way, way beyond that. We are in our spiritual beings, eternal, without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. And it's referenced right there. So I just want to encourage your hearts to, to, to truly believe the truth, to enter into who you truly are and to to let that divine love be disruptive generosity to the people around you, the community around you. That you would fervently love one another and no judgment or condemnation or pointing the finger. That's old church. If you want old church, then you need to be awakened to the beauty and the love that, that Jesus is showing us in this scripture. So I want to fan into flame those amazing gifts because you're family to me and I absolutely love and adore each one of you and there's nothing that I wouldn't do. Prompting of the Holy Spirit is the key. You know, if you see a brother and sister in need, what are you going to do? If somebody knocks on your door at 3 a.m., you don't not answer the door because it's your brother or sister in need. And what is it like to consider... Uh, each other so that each other does not have need let, let's preempt it let's not let each other fall into something you know if there's any condemnation in you if there's any judgment in you if there's any negativity in you is that you've given resurrection life to your old old man the old life and you're still living a human life but you're not. We're fully, fully, fully redeemed. We are beautiful beyond comprehension. Each one of us. So maybe today, just heighten your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Ask for eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts of understanding. Do things that are outrageously kind let disruptive generosity be who you are to this world. And I just pray this beautiful Friday. The sun is shining. I just pray a deep shalom into your hearts. And when you read the word, when you take hold of the gospel, don't overanalyze it in your mindset. 
but take it into your heart and let it be like the seed that, that takes root and grows. But one thing I would ask of each one of us over these next few days, do something that is of a disruptive generosity, an outrageous kindness, uh, a beyond understanding expression of love for each other. Go that extra mile. Don't walk aside. Don't, don't let somebody walk in, in, in a, a rejected nature. Go and knock on a door. Put a bag of shopping outside somebody's house. Pay for something for somebody. You know, I parked my car. I, I went into a petrol station, filled my car. £80 pounds it was. And then I messed about in the back of the car and I boot the car trying to sort something out. I went to pay for it. And there it was, fully paid for. And that, that's unbelievably generous. But no, I didn't know who it was. This was quarter past midnight. And the cashier said to me, a guy dressed in a, uh, a football tracksuit just came up and paid for it. Pump number two, paid for it with a card. And when I went to look for this guy, I couldn't find him. Outrageous generosity. 